Welcome everyone to this review of Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain for the PlayStation 4. Also available on Xbox One, Xbox 360, PC, and PS3. So plenty of ways to get a hold of the newest Metal Gear game. You can see I got my Collector's Edition, I got the t-shirt, and even have the Metal Gear Solid 5 Phantom Pain prosthetic arm looming overhead. Because it, like I'm sure many of you by the time this review is done, you're going to want to choke the crap out of me. I'm a long-time Metal Gear Solid fan. I've been a fan since the NES days, even though I didn't quite understand how to play the games, and then years later with the Solid series when I really fell truly in love. Metal Gear Solid 2 was the reason I went ahead and got a PS2, and the same goes for Metal Gear Solid 4 with the PS3. Metal Gear Solid 3 happens to be my personal favorite, though, in the series. I actually marathoned played 2, 3, and 4 on launch, playing all the way from start to finish in a single setting, and I loved every single second of that. With that being said, though, Metal Gear Solid 5 doesn't measure up in any way, shape, or form to me to Metal Gear Solids 2, 3, or 4. The things I love most about the Metal Gear games are its story-driven, cinematic, characters, and bosses. That whole atmosphere of feeling like a really amazing action movie with just intense characters and interesting characters, sometimes completely over-the-top and outrageous, but that's what's made them fun and interesting, and I feel like they've really gotten far away from that. However, there is a very simple review for you guys if you're interested in getting the game without even having to watch the rest of this video. If you liked Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, you're going to love this game. Basically, Metal Gear Solid 5 is Peace Walker if you gave it a mushroom from Mario and it went Omega size. All the same gameplay mechanics pretty much from Peace Walker included here. Now that's not to say I completely hated Peace Walker. In fact, the story and characters introduced in Peace Walker, and a lot of which finished up with Ground Zeroes, I absolutely loved. I thought it was a gripping story, even though it was told very minimalistically, I think mainly due to the limitations of the PlayStation Portable, so it was acceptable on that level. However, Metal Gear Solid 5's story is spread out so, so much, you'll go hours and hours and hours without really feeling like you've made any progress from a storyline perspective. Metal Gear Solid 5, though, does start off on a note that is just so ridiculous and so amazing that there's probably no way the game could have kept up at that pace. The opening prologue with the hospital scene that we got teased with at the end of Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes and some of the trailers blew me away. I was just like, at that point, strap me in, I, I want to play this game forever and just play it through to the end in one go. And unfortunately though, very quickly after that opening prologue, you get to find out what the game is truly about. And unlike a lot of Metal Gear games where it's a very linear game, Metal Gear Solid 5 Phantom Pain is a very huge game. The problem is it tries to be too huge. There's very little to do outside of the main story missions. Like many other open world games, and it's trying to be truly an open world game like Grand Theft Auto or Red Dead Redemption or even like Sleeping Dogs or Watch Dogs, there's no mini games really spread out. There's no other kind of side content to really explore. It's very limited in that. So you combine that pretty bland open world experience with the overall tone of what the game truly is about, and that is the Mother Base. Mother Base works as your core, your hub, like your hideout in some other open world games. But your goal really is to upgrade it. You're really supposed to focus most of your attention in the game on the mother base and upgrading that. People that love to do games where you gather resources, upgrade buildings and the like, you're going to absolutely love every moment that you're doing that in this game. Large portions of the game involve you finding the right resources on missions or Fulton out personnel so that you can then use them later on. The Fulton system is fully back from Peace Walker, where you basically attach a magic balloon to somebody and send them up into the stratosphere, they're picked up, and then they're converted into a soldier that you can then use at your mother base in different teams. These different teams, like research and development, or medical, or uh, security, can be upgraded so that you can then either unlock new things, protect your mother base, or be able to heal people faster. And this quickly becomes monotonous. They do do a good job for people who really don't care about it, like myself, 
where you can instantly put the best people in the best positions while also making sure that everything is kind of evenly spread out. I think the game does a good automatic job of that if you uh, press the button in order to do so. The problem is, unless you really, really focus on it and really micromanage it yourself, it can be hard at times in order to get enough levels and what you need to in order to upgrade your equipment properly. And when you do finally do this, unless you're upgrading with a massive amount of team, you have to wait in order for the upgrades to take place. It's not like, hmm, I can get that a new assault rifle, hit the button, and hit go. No, you actually have to wait sometimes 10, 20, 30, an hour or two hours of real time in order for something to finally be researched enough and complete it. I'm pretty sure that if you have a better team, this will go faster, but I mean, at that point, by the time you could get a better team to make it go faster, it's already been completed. And this is real time, not like turn off the game and you can get it automatically by coming back the next day. No, you have to have the game and the system on for that hour, two hours, whatever it may be needed in order to finally unlock that. I guess they anticipated people to want to play something like a Facebook game or a mobile game like Farmville where you're waiting around for the grass to grow enough or you're waiting for your cow to get bigger so that you can sell it. That kind of gameplay does not appeal to someone like me whatsoever. However, for those who like those kind of games, you'll probably find some enjoyment with this. Now, what do you do with everything you've upgraded? Well, you go on missions. The game is all mission-based. Very much like Peace Walker, where you're dropped into a limited area. And limited, I'm using loosely here. The areas are quite large. And don't get me wrong, the world in the game itself is quite a big map. You have a lot to explore here in the game. The problem is, for missions, you're limited. If you go outside of the zone, you instantly fail a mission. And if you get far and accidentally go down the wrong side of the road for a brief period of time and end up going out of the mission zone without realizing you're doing it, the game doesn't give you a prompt that says, are you sure you want to quit the mission? It does give you a little warning in the corner, but if you're not looking directly at it, you may miss it, accidentally go out of the mission zone and have to start the whole mission over from the beginning again, which that happened once to me and that was enough to make me rage, trust me. But with the missions themselves, they're in these limited areas and most of the time you'll start off on the opposite end of the entire area from where you're supposed to be. You have to very slowly at times move over to where the actual mission is taking place, complete it, and then quickly get out. The whole missions though themselves break down to stuff like take out an enemy commander, a meaningless, nameless kind of enemy commander. They all kind of blend the wind with one another like yeah they're supposed to be important for whatever leadership they have but they're not like a really in-depth story character that you feel cool and feel accomplished for hunting down and actually taking out same goes for enemy equipment like random tanks or a random jeep you also have to a ton of times go in and grab a random prisoner that was taken hostage and then Fulton them out or sometimes actually carry them out because the Fulton would be too strenuous on their body in order for you to use it Overall though, these make up a majority of the 50 main story missions in the game. The game has 50 missions, which actually is a good amount. The problem is, when you take away these types of missions, you take away the repeated missions. Yeah, there's repeated main missions in this game. Like, and I'm not talking about with similar goals or, you know, even the same Lego, no, the exact same mission. The only difference is you have different things put in place like you have to do it totally stealth or you have to do it subsistence with no equipment then when you combine both of those in the end you're left with about 12 or 13 unique character driven feel important to the plot style missions out of 50 out of 50 only about 13 12 or 13 of them really feel like metal gear I'm not saying that there isn't any story to these missions. One of the big other problems with the game is most of the storyline is told through cassette tapes. Which wouldn't be so bad in a lot of games nowadays, but for Metal Gear, it's built around its cutscenes and its dramatic cinematic experiences, watching the characters interact with one another, and that's completely taken out by having cassette tapes that you listen to. The scenes that are in there are cool, don't get me wrong, though there is a little too many torture scenes for my liking. 
Not that that can't be cool, but at the same time, it's like, okay, gotcha, we're torturing this again, this is, okay. Show me something new, is basically what I was waiting for with some of these scenes. However, like I said also, they are so far spread out. I mean, you may go five, ten hours in this game without really feeling like you've made any story progress, which is, like I said before, the most important part to me. Now, real quickly, minor spoiler here, I'm going to number the missions that I found were actually important and actually drove the plot along and had interesting characters either introduced or a major part of them that made them feel more like Metal Gear to me. Uh, mission number zero, the prologue to the game. Then missions 11, yep, that far of a gap between them. Mission number 20, mission 23, missions 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32. Easily the best part of the entire game is missions 28 through 32. And then mission 43, 45, and 46. And that's it. Out of 50 main story missions, that's the only ones that I found that if you just did those missions by themselves, you had a pretty good solid game, no pun intended, that could stand alone. Now, with these 50 missions, they're broken up, though, into two parts, Chapter 1 and Chapter 2, with Chapter 1 ending at Mission 32. Like I said, easily the best part of this entire experience is Missions 28 through 32. Once you complete it, though, that's honestly the end of the game. The second half, Chapter 2, is where those rehashes start coming in. Combine those with the fact that you get very little storylines missions from that point on and everything feels unfinished This game was not completed There's been a lot of stuff going on that Konami thought the game was going too far over budget This is what led to the falling out with them in Kojima either way these this whole second half of the game should have truly been Eliminated from the game the game should finish at mission 32 now you're gonna say all oh, that extra content so many hours you wouldn't have missed it. There is still 20, 30, 40 hours or more that you could put into the game prior to even reaching mission number 32. I know some people that already put 50, 60 hours into the game and haven't even hit mission number 32 yet. So there's a ton to do in this game, even if that second crappy half, which honestly takes the game from up here to way, way down here. Now I do want to mention really quickly something about a particular mission. I'm not going to spoil exactly what happens in the mission, but I'm going to put an annotation really quickly somewhere. Click that and move ahead in the video a little bit. Uh, I also may time code it down below so that's easier for people to access it that way who don't like annotations because I just need to mention this because it really affected my opinion on the game even more than everything else that was going on in it. And that's mission 46. Mission number 46 is the final mission of the game. And it includes a huge twist to the entire storyline, which took the game from already being really low to me to going all the way through the earth, through the core, through the center of the earth, all the way out the other side and then out into outer space. That is how bad this twist causes my opinion of the game. It is awful. It is horrendous. It is the one of the worst thing that's happened to Metal Gear. It's worse than Make It Riding could ever have possibly been for the entire Metal Gear Solid franchise. This is awful. Awful. It's inexcusable and it's terrible. One of the other huge factors I have to get out of the way though, as far as negativity of this game is boss fights. Where are the boss fights? Metal Gear Solid is built on humongous, ridiculous, amazing bosses, but there's none here. At most, you can maybe count six bosses Honestly though, two of them are squads, basically just sets of unique soldiers that don't have like names or anything, they're all exactly the same as one another, but they're stronger. You have an encounter that you can't win, so I look at that as kind of like, you know, that setup encounter where, okay, I can't, I can't beat them, I escape with my life, I'll get them next time, but you don't even get a payoff really for that. You have a boss fight that pretty much is just press R2, counter, fight's over. You then have the two important fights. One is based around a character that's very pivotal to the story and personally my favorite of the new characters introduced into the game. 
And then you have the big epic boss, which is just amazing. That that fight really felt like Metal Gear. Like, I'm on the edge of my seat, I'm enjoying every second in it. I die a couple of times during the fight, but not a single ounce of rage or, or anger is building up because I'm just, I'm loving every moment of this. And then that was the end of one part of the game, and you go into that next part, and it's quickly dashed. It's like my heart was ripped out of my chest and stabbed right then and there from going from such an amazing moment to such a crappy crappy realization of what was about to happen and what was going on in the game at this point. I mean, where's the fear? Where, where's Sora? Where's, where's Oga? Where's Vamp? Uh, where's Octopus, Raven, Psycho Manus? Where's Vulgan? Where is all of those amazing bosses that made the past Metal Gear games even more epic and amazing than they already were? Where are they? Just nowhere to be had. A few more really, really cool boss fights could have helped this game a lot, and I do know one boss in particular was completely cut from the game that would have explained a lot of things, would have tied up a lot of loose ends, and it's a real shame that Konami pulled the plug on the game before that came out. Had that been included, my opinion of the game would definitely have been changed a bit, especially if it was as good as the other major boss that we dealt with in the game. The one major thing I haven't really talked about at all, how the game plays. I mean, it is a video game, of course, so in the end, how does it play? I have to admit, it, it's stellar. It is absolutely stellar. It's just an amazing experience as far as being able to pick up the controller, go into a small area, whether you're stealth or whether you're Ramboing it, it feels good. It feels fun to sneak around the enemies or trick the enemies and then blast the crap out of them in one way or another. It's fun. The easiest pick up and play Metal Gear game in the whole series. Yeah, there's a little bit of convoluted controls. It's to be expected with Metal Gear. Kojima loves to experiment with weird things as far as control schemes and other elements like that. But it does play fantastic. It's why it hurts so much that this game didn't deliver the me with its story and its characters and boss fights and has so many parts where it just drags that could have been moved over to like side missions and not been a part of the main missions fixing up that whole second half and making it better or just completely cutting it would have really helped because the gameplay is so fun there are some really amazing moments that I will always remember, especially going back and replaying the game kind of after I finished up most of the stuff and just kind of trying to immerse myself even more into the game than I had previously. Hunting wild animals, which is one of the few side things you can do, can be very enjoyable. There's also the whole cassette tapes. Basically, you can find random cassette tapes and then listen to them. They play random songs, like mostly 80s pop music, but there's also some Metal Gear songs in there, too. I mean, listening to kids in America while you're blasting through a whole row of enemies in a giant walker. Or you're listening to the take on me, just kind of like chilling, sitting back, maybe walking in a box at your mother base, looking at the big ocean in front of you. It's a gorgeous sight and really fun. And then you, of course, have the final countdown. Playing that song at any point with an epic thing going on, especially a major boss, the major boss of the game, and then killing the boss with that is, it, it's amazing. I, I really cannot fault anybody for liking this game. I can't argue against this game from its gameplay. From its core gameplay, I cannot argue with anyone for liking this game whatsoever. I can see why it's getting a lot of 10 out of 10s and 9.5s out of 10s at the lowest. Real quickly though, also I have to say the soundtrack itself is good. There's a couple of new original songs that are fantastic, that will easily fit in with all the other great Metal Gear epic amazing songs. And then the graphics, mind blowing. It just, it's ridiculous. This engine feels good. It looks good. Yes, most of what you're looking at is just stupid sand and dirt and rocks, but 
the best damn looking sand, dirt, and rocks I've seen in any game lately, especially on the PlayStation 4. The graphics are just unbelievably spectacular. Very little problems as far as playing the game. It wasn't crashing on me. It wasn't breaking down on me. Uh, there was very little glitches when I played through the game, and I put easily 50 hours or so by the time I was finally done doing everything I possibly could. I really didn't run into any technical problems. It's a very good game. It's an extremely good game. One of the best games this entire year. But as a Metal Gear fan, I can't help but be disappointed. The elements I love the most about Metal Gear were ignored. While well, other elements that I honestly always looked as second fiddles got improved to a point that exceeds every game prior in the entire series. So, with that, I have to say from a game perspective, and I rate games harshly, remember, in fact, I don't even give my favorite video games ever 10 out of 10s, the game's an 8. I give the game an 8, which is the second highest rating I would give any game that's come out this year. The only thing I have is higher is, is Witcher 3. But for me, as a Metal Gear fan, in my personal review, I'm giving the game a 5. I want to give the game lower, but I can't. Like, I just am my right conscience as a gamer. I can't give the game lower than a 5. It's no way it's lower than mediocre, even with all of the myriads of problems I've listed throughout this review. So, from a gameplay, 8 from me, a 5. But that's going to wrap up this review of Metal Gear Solid 5 Phantom Pain. It may have been a disappointment, but I still love Metal Gear. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.